Excellent. Are we live? We're live. <coughs> hey guys, right. Special um, special episode here of the Right Roast, a live one, but not for the Right Roast Coffee Club. This is an unboxing special episode. And we're talking about grinders. In fact, we have a special hand grinder to talk about. But first, I just want you to um, appreciate the world of hand grinders. Now we know that in specialty coffee, tools matter and grinding is probably one of the most important tools you'll need or want. I mean, it's not an essential. A lot of people buy ground coffee, but we know that in specialty coffee, grinding, it's really, really important. Your beans, they must stay as fresh as long as possible, right up to the point you're about to brew. Then you grind and then you brew. And that's how you maintain freshness. And we're all in love with many kinds of grinders and different things to help with your coffee. But when you leave the house and you go camping and things like that, what are your priorities? I mean, for instance, we just received this for instance re recently, an amazing grinder, but it's unlikely that I'm going to take this one with me camping or even leave the house with it. Probably will never leave the place it sits in the kitchen. So incredible grinders at home. And then you want to go out. Here's another one. So we've got the Commandante. It's such an absolute classic. A brilliant hand grinder, portable, durable, strong. But would you really want to go camping if this was your only hand grinder? Your precious Commandante? Honestly, I'd think twice about it. I'd be like, hmm, it might break or I might crack the glass or it might drop. For instance, you're camping and you've got your rucksack or whatever and it drops. Then the burrs are misaligned. Who knows what? But I just think there's good. it's good to have hand grinder options for going outdoors. And I know that I've used when I go to friends and camping and stuff, I've used the Hario hand grinder. You've got the little cheap one, but it's not that good. So I want as much of this quality, but I want to make it ideal for outdoors. Well, that's where this bad boy comes in. It's called the Java and it's by Vessel. Now Vessel are an interesting company because they are actually outdoor specialists. This is their thing. They make outdoor gear and we did some research and found some of their interesting products. I haven't got them here, but they've got one which is, it looks a lot like a grinder actually. It's a tube container and it's got a compass on top and a light on the bottom and all these different compartments for you to store things in. Very durable and hardy. They make all sorts of hardy wear for outdoors, first aid kits. And now this, a hand grinder. Right, so I wanna unbox it, but first look at the box. I mean, it's got these weird three layers here which I really, really like. Now, because we're live, I can't cut to any close-ups, but can you see that? I think as a box, I'm really impressed. I saw this on the Kickstarter and I really wanted to unbox it actually, because I love the design. So finally, here we go. It seems like this just slides off. Look at that, right. So you got one layer off. Now you take it out, I think there, yeah, look at that. Oh, wow. This comes off actually. So the front panel opens out. Love that. And then there's the hand grinder. Wow. And straight away, it's really weighty. It actually feels like a nice solid build. Wow. It's got something here. It's all oh, right. So there's some more parts inside all covered up. Let me just remove this packaging. Okay, right. Now here's the burr. It comes wrapped up and protected. So you have to install the burr yourself, I think. Nicholas, ah. Nicholas, Kopne. Kopne? Nicholas Good yes, afternoon. is asking a question. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Nicholas. I was wrong, this is not the burr, this is the handle. So the handle gets stored away. That's very clever. So um, I'm just working it out now, but you've got one part in storage, so you take that out. That's not the burr, the burr's already in there. Right, now this handle, this is the carry binder. So it's a clip that you'd find in a lot of outdoor gear, camping, can take the load of like, I think it's 200 kilos, is it? Or 200 pounds. There was a fact about how much weight it can take, but this is solid, solid build. So it's the handle. You can clip it probably to your waist, to your bag, to anywhere, but then you unscrew it and it also becomes the grinder handle. So with this part that comes inside, you can grind it without the handle, but I'd imagine it's a lot easier with that part. 
And I love it. It doesn't even need to be screwed on or anything. It just slides on. Yes? It's 200 pounds. It's 200 pounds weight that it can take. So that's a really, really strong build. Kilos would be a bit much and no need for 200 kilos. So yeah, um, that fits in there. Right. And that's the size of the grinder. Should we compare it to the Commandante in terms of size? Because your Commandante is also, I would say, a standard grinder size. You have other competitors and they'll all be roughly in this size bracket. So if we look at it side by side with the vassals, Java, then the Java is about 33% smaller, which is good. So camping is all about compactness. They've probably worked out that this is exactly the right size to be small enough to go camping with, but large enough to take a decent amount of coffee. And I believe it takes up to 20 grams in one grind. So it isn't the highest capacity, but when you're camping, your priorities change. I just want something to last, to be strong and reliable and make a good grind. But I wouldn't expect it to be the perfect grind. Obviously camping, you adjust your standards. So um, I think we should do some testing and uh, we'll, I'll have to dial in the right grind size. But the best thing, the best way to know the results would be in the drink itself. It could look fancy, it could feel like it's grinding well, but in the end, if my coffee tastes a bit weird, then the grinder itself isn't performing the duties, the one duty it's supposed to do, which is to give you the most even grind possible. So I try to look at these things for two things. Are they doing the job of doing a good grind? And are they doing their USP as well, beyond the good grind? And the USP for this is the durability. I'm not going to start banging it with a hammer or throwing it around, but it feels really, really strong. Really, really good. This is a very solid build. No glass on it as well. So you could say the Commandante, whilst being one of the most perfect hand grinders I can think of, glass might not be the ideal thing for campers. And I just think I would be nervous to take this outdoors with me. I think even if it was my only grinder, I would just grind and go instead of using my beloved um, Commandante. So this, I think, will be a great alternative. Now let's see if it's any good. Okay. I'm just figuring out how to use it, so I'm not sure how to take it off. Oh, well, there we go. That is already interesting. So it's not... Ah, oh, excellent. So you get a nice little bag as well. Cool. Look at that. Well, I won't put it in the bag now. But the top comes off not by turning, just by pushing the button. Can you see? So if I try to take this off any other way, it doesn't screw off, it just rotates. But you press the button and it just comes straight off. And you can feel that that is built really, really well, I have to say. I feel like it's camera gear or something. Wow. So I guess I'm gonna put coffee grinds, is it in the top? Yes, I'm gonna put them in the top. It's going to come out here. Right, so let's grind some coffee. Okay. And I'm going to brew it in an AeroPress as well, just so you know. Um, another camper's favorite is the AeroPress and the AeroPress Go, something we will be talking about. But for today's purposes, I'll use the AeroPress, which people love to use outdoors because it's another compact tool. I mean, if you think about it, once you pack up an AeroPress, there isn't much to it and it's all made of plastic. So um, that's why we'll test it with the AeroPress. Okay. So shall, what sort of recipe shall I use? Um, shall I do a 15? I'll do a 15 grams, 15 grams. 16 to 240 15. water. Okay, right. So there's the little handle part. <laughs> Stick that. The grinder, yeah? Okay, so take off the AeroPress. That's right, got to grind first. So put that on here. Right, coffee. Where's the coffee? <laughs> Thank you. Right. Okay, this is a Honduras coffee. Won't talk about the brand. Here we go. So 15, 16 grams of coffee. That's nearly the capacity. So 20 is the full amount you can fit in this. Okay, that's 13.5, okay, 15.7, 8, 9, 16.3, what's going on here? 
Okay. So. I have exactly 16 grams of coffee. Take that aside. Now I'm going to see how enjoyable it is to grind. I'm going to rate it on that as well because one of the things I love about the Commandante is the handle design. It's really, really designed well for your, your turning action to give it some welly. And when I saw this, my one concern was the handle. Is it too short? Is it too stumpy? Is it going to be unpleasant? I don't think it has to be the most sort of smooth, exciting experience because you're camping. And again, your standards and expectations are different. But I just wanted to not feel like total crap when grinding. Okay, here we go. Right, so that little handle, it's very clever. You've got this magnet thing here. You stick that on there and then it pulls this in. There, it keeps it on, I think. Wow. Right, so the grind quality, here we go. Oh, I haven't set actually what grind size I'm gonna do. So let's see, at the bottom, well, this is good. One more plus, if you could focus on that for me, is that you've got an indicator of which way is coarse and which way is fine. Something that I find on the Commandante as well. Let's, let's compare the two, actually. So if you look inside, Commandante, got the indicators, nice solid switching turning, and then the Vassal's Java, similar deal. So really impressive that, I think, for a camping grinder. Sorry, can you see? Okay. Is that good? Okay, right. We'll have two cameras one day and then you'll get close-ups. Right. Now, where did I put that little piece that fell down? There it is. Okay, here we go. So this piece is for the handle. You can probably grind it without, but it's going to hurt your hand after a while. Um, I'm going to go for, again, I might be grinding this wrong because I haven't calibrated it yet, but let's just see. I mean, Oh, so I've got, it's different numbers on this one. So I'm going to go back to the beginning. That's the way I do it usually on the Commandante is I'll go back to the beginning and then I'll start counting the clicks till I get to my desired click strength. Mine is usually 30 on the Commandante. So I'm going to do a grind and then look at it, check the grind, and then I'll be able to hopefully calibrate it. So. Let's go to the finest. Right. Is that the finest? Hmm. <laughs> this is going to be tricky, actually. So I think I better just grind and do this visually. So could I have a white piece of paper? And the ruler. Perfect. So the ruler can help. And I can probably do a comparative grind with another grinder. But I think I'll just use the ruler. That will visually give me a calibration I need. So if you don't already know the Bruler, a very useful gadget from Kruv, and it's going to come in really handy now for me to calibrate. I would say a Bruler is good for camping as well, because um, look, it doesn't take up much space, and it has a thousand uses. You could probably slice bread with it when you're camping. OK. So grind a little. And let's see. I'll just take that off and I'll grind straight onto the paper. Stable Maybe uh, just come closer for now, yeah. Okay, so that looks like around, we could be, I'm not sure. Can you see that? It's about 800 microns. We're in the medium, I think. Very interesting, right. So there's my grinds. Some look tiny, but on average, I would say we're in the right ballpark. Maybe I'll go a bit coarser. So one more click. Okay, I would say that's about right. So let's grind that up. Okay, here we go. Okay, it's not too easy, but without this handle, I would say it's even harder. So take that weird thing off. Right. 
So it can be done without the big handle, see? But this makes it a lot easier. Just stick that back on. Yeah, so I'm finding it much easier to turn with this. Ah, and I've just noticed, look, this handle has an extender. So that's really important. I've been grinding it with its short stubby. Now we all know physics, right? The longer the arm, the easier it is to turn something. So uh, Foucault's pendulum, this is science here. The longer the handle, the easier to turn. There we go. That little extension made a big difference. It's tricky though. But when you're camping, you're gonna be absolutely fine, I think. Okay. Okay. Ah, and there we go, wow. It really chewed through that, amazing. Okay, so we have our grounds. Whoops. Okay, so that's something to watch out for. The handle flies off. John, so, John 17. John 17. Physics. 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 Right, John? Okay, so let's get brewing. So I'm going to reset. Okay, coffee in. Okay, so it's actually 15 grams. So I'll do a 15 gram recipe. 15 to what, 230? I've got 15, not 16, because I did a test. So, is it? Oh, it's 16, we're okay. So I think I went over originally. We're on 16, reset the time, start the clock. Okay, fingers crossed we got a tasty brew on our hands. So. Remind me again, how am I going? First pour to 50? Yeah. First pour to 50. Right, a classic AeroPress, inverted AeroPress recipe I'm using here, I should say. So um, I just want to find out if this thing is up to the task. Right, so stir one, two, three, four times. Right, and I think that's enough pre-infusion, so I'm now going to pour, what, the rest? Yep. Okay. And we're going to pour to 240, nearly at the top. Now remember, you can imagine if I was testing this, if I was doing the full camping test, I'd have an AeroPress Go, which is half the size. And you wouldn't need scales when camping. That's something else I have to say. You just basically fill it to the top there. That's 240. I'm about a few mil left from the top. So you can see that I wouldn't really need the scales. That's what people love about the AeroPress. Um, okay, let me pre-wet the paper. Handy little thing. You can put this on top of the vessel. Makes it easier to pre-wet the paper. Right. Should have done it. Should have done it at the beginning, right? <laughs> Should have done it at the beginning. Okay. Right. Cap on with the wet paper. Squeeze out the air. The air is out. Take the vessel. Thanks, Ico. Flip. And press. Press gently. One paper in there, not a double paper. So sometimes I have a double paper for extra clean brew, but of course you're going to hold back a lot as well with double paper. So only certain recipes call for the double filter paper. John, right. John Seventeen says this reminds me of my chem lecture. It's a chemistry class, indeed. Okay. Well, I won't go on too much about Fulcrum's pendulum and things like that. Sorry. Um, but it was really impressive to see that the handle does come out and extend. I think that's really important. It was getting a bit tricky to grind. The thing is, it felt like a decent grind. I think for the size and compactness of the grinder, this is going to work. Hopefully we've got a nice clean brew. Okay, that's it. Pull it up a little, that helps it not drip. Right, and a cup or two. One for me, one for Ico, 
There you go. So one Honduras filter coffee ground with the new Java by Vassal. Right. Let's see how she goes. Smells nice. Oh, that's fantastic. Wow. No bitterness. You see, ultimately what I'm looking for is, is there any bitterness? The bitterness in this coffee, and I know this coffee well, so if I'd have picked up any bitterness, that would tell me it's a result of getting too many fines in the coffee, uneven extraction, uneven grind, low quality grinders. That's what they tend to do. They're not doing very well at sort of crushing the beans evenly. So all the little pieces that you have, some are bigger than others, and therefore the coffee being extracted from those pieces is different. Some pieces big, takes a little, little pieces, it takes a lot. Then your coffee has this kind of off kilter taste, slightly bitter sometimes. Not getting that here at all. That tells me really good grind quality. Even. And very even, visually, here, if you want a visual account, there's the proof. Me telling you in the taste, that's one thing. But if you need an actual visual proof, these are the grinds and they look wonderful to me. And such a clean tasting coffee. Beautiful. I'm really impressed. I'm imagining myself camping right now with this vassal and feeling the satisfaction of a great brew. Then what am I going to do? Here we go. Put this little handle back in there. Screw that back on top. This is what I love. Then the handle that was extended out and grinding collapses again, goes back in on itself. Well, you take that magnet off. So the magnet part that fits in the little handle. So put that away. Don't want to lose any of these parts. Now the carabinder closes on itself. And there we go. Make sure I screw that on top correctly. There. So I screw the carabinder down and that's great. It's not a clip on, it's a turn screw and that means it can take the load and it becomes this really strong camping device that won't let you down. Could probably take a lot of knockings by the feel of it and keep on grinding. So fantastic stuff. Thank you Vassal for this and uh, it's been a pleasure unboxing it and testing it out. The coffee's great. It's passed all the tests. And I think it's a really, really useful addition. Like I said, your beloved Commandante or your impossible to take out machine grinder. You know, we don't have these sort of camping or outdoors or it doesn't have to be camping. Just going to the local park or whatever it is with your friends. You don't want to take your special grinder. This I reckon is a great second grinder to have. But if it's going to be your only grinder, be an outdoors person because this will really suit that. Great guys. Thanks for joining us. That's it for today. Much more coming soon. And uh, yeah, this has been a lot of fun. Stay coffee enlightened, people. We're signing off. <laughs> okay.